Someone who commented on one of my videos asked if I looked at a PBS FaceTime video because it discussed the problem with the incompatibility between the Universal Space Time Expansion model and the actual expansion of space and galaxies. And he pointed out that space and galaxies doesn't expand, which means it's incompatible with the space time expansion model. Yet, of course, he doesn't say that. He tries to rescue the model. So I'm going to show some of his clips and I'll make some comments. But first I want to say that universal space expansion requires that it expand everywhere. This is called the FLRW metric after the people that came up with it. But all of our observational evidence shows that space doesn't expand. It doesn't expand in our galaxy, Andromeda, or other galaxies. It doesn't expand in superclusters of galaxies. Stars couldn't form if space was expanding faster than gravity could work. And the same is true even with black holes. If you have space expanding in an early universe that is expanding faster than light, then black holes can never form. So all the observation evidence, if we actually think about it, shows that space isn't expanding. And the other part of it is the general relativistic solutions for space expansion and for galaxies or stars or black holes aren't compatible. And that's a problem with general relativity because the space-time metric version of gravity is so complex that you can't really do two completely different models at the same time, but you can't have faster and light space-time expansion and the black hole calculation going on simultaneously because one of them is not going to work. And so all this non-expansion in our real observation disproves space-time expansion. But of course he doesn't say this in the video. And with that, I'll go to his introductory clip. Space is big, and it's getting bigger. But where does all that new space actually come from? And is it popping into existence around you right now? A hundred years ago, a collection of observations and theoretical ideas came together to reveal that the universe is expanding on the larger scales. The distant galaxies are all racing away from us, and interpreted through the lens of Einstein's general theory of relativity, this only makes sense if all distances everywhere are increasing evenly. This revelation led to the discovery of the beginning of the universe at the Big Bang, and it lets us predict its future. It'll probably expand forever, FYI. We know the effect of cosmic expansion on the most enormous scales, but what about the here and the now? If space is expanding everywhere, is it expanding inside the solar system? Inside you? And what does it even mean for space to be expanding? Does that stretching stretch space thin? Will it eventually snap like overdrawn taffy? Or does new space get created on the fly? In which case, where does it come from? And right off the bat, he's saying a lot of things that aren't scientifically valid or at least not scientifically defensible because they're imaginary ideas. And one of the first is that space is not a real physical substance. When Einstein imagined a space-time medium with dimensions and clocks, there isn't anything there. So right then we have a problem. And so there's no substance, no substance we know of. And so we can't create new substance that never was there in the first place. And then he talks about there being a beginning of the universe. And well, you have to have causality. Anything in logic and anything in the scientific method requires causal relationships. Something has to cause the next thing. But in order for something to cause something, something has to be there. And so you can't have an absolute beginning. You always have to have something that caused the next thing and to infinity, which means something has to always be there. 
to infinity, which means there can't be a beginning. There has to always be something, or causality is broken. And like I said, you break causality, you break science, and you break logic. And then we can go back to the Tolman test, which I recently did a video on. You can watch that. But that disproves space-time expansion, even if there were anything there to expand in the first place. And with that, I'll play the second clip. If you use general relativity to track how the FLRW metric changes over time, you find that it has to change, either growing or shrinking in size everywhere evenly. The FLRW metric makes some pretty big assumptions that matter in the universe is perfectly evenly spread out, homogeneous. And it looks the same in all directions, isotropic. These seem to be a good representation of the universe on the larger scales. The coordinate grid of this slice could be represented in spherical polar coordinates. In that case, it looks a lot like latitude and longitude. Those lines are smooth because of our founding assumptions of homogeneity and isotropy. But if we zoom in, we can see that the shape of the grid lines change. They pull towards massive objects like galaxies. In fact, the shape of space-time around massive objects is not the FLRW metric because matter isn't spread out evenly. For example, near a massive compact object, the correct description of the space-time is the Schwarzschild metric. The space in the Schwarzschild metric by itself does not expand. In fact, space is pulled inwards, pinched, and is completely static over time. But what about if it's embedded in a larger FLW spacetime? Does the underlying expanding sphere fight against the inward pull of gravity? Is the space inside, say, a galaxy growing, but overcome by the gravitational attraction between the stars? The answer is no. Space within any gravitationally bound system is unaffected by the surrounding expansion. In the balloon analogy, it's tempting to think of the galaxy as being held together despite the expanding material that it's attached to, but that's not what's happening. The gravitational field isn't something that lies on top of the fabric of space-time. The gravitational field is the fabric of space-time. If the gravitational field of the galaxy is this static, inwardly pinched grid of the Schwarzschild metric, then that's it. That's the space-time in that area. There isn't another underlying expanding grid that that field has to fight against. In fact, the space-time inside the Milky Way doesn't even know that the universe is expanding. Well, he discusses the FLRW metric, which, because this metric has no substance, it's not real, it's an imaginary thing. And so discussing it is unreal. And then he talks about the assumption of homogeneity and isotropic nature of space that has to be uniform. And those things aren't true. We, at every scale we look, as large as we want, we keep finding larger and larger structures. There doesn't appear to be any limit to having large irregular structures in the universe. And then he talks about space being pulled or pinched and having grid lines. And once again, there, there's nothing there to be pulled or pinched. There's no grid lines. You have no substance with dimensions to put grid lines on. There's, there's just nothing there. It's all imaginary. It's, it's not real science because it's not based on anything. In order to have dimensions, you have to have a substance with dimensions. You need something with distances and something with clocks, which means something with wavelengths and frequencies, which must be quantized. And I'll play the next clip and discuss that some more. If the galaxy causes grid lines to be pulled together on a sphere, then on a ring, it causes points to be pulled together. And they maintain that separation as the ring expands. So on our expanding cone, we see distant grid lines diverging, but nearby lines in a gravitational field will remain parallel. So there is no constant tug of war between the expanding universe and the gravitationally bound systems it contains. That tug of war did happen, but it happened a long time ago. In certain regions, expansion won, and threw apart objects and the space-time grids they trace. 
but in sufficiently dense regions, gravity won, and there the only evidence of the greater expansion comes from the receding view of distant galaxies. I told you that space doesn't get stretched out like rubber. In a sense, new space gets created as it expands. But what does that actually mean? Well, this is a tough one. In fact, an impossible one, because we don't have an accepted theory for what the fabric of space is actually made out of, if it's made out of anything. That's the province of a long-sought theory of quantum gravity. But let's see what we can say with what we know. In general relativity, space can be infinitely divided. That means we can start with a universe that's small and grid it up and watch it expand. This all works if space is infinitely divisible. And so we have a lot more of the same, trying to explain away how we could have expanding space, but all the evidence say that space isn't expanding in anything we actually observe. And he talks about there being a quantized medium, maybe, and well, any real medium is going to be quantized. You can't have a medium that's not quantized because anything real has dimensions. And if it has dimensions, it's going to have wavelengths and frequencies associated as is needed for general relativity to work in the first place. And then any quantized medium is not going to be infinitely divisible because it's going to have actual sizes. You can't just break up a quantized piece of something into a different size because it has its size. So you can't just keep getting smaller and smaller stuff between all the space and keep dividing and expanding and dividing and expanding. So an infinitely divisible space is a mathematical construct, not a physical one. It's not something that's real and can never be real. There's no such thing as a infinitely divisible media because any media is quantized. It has real properties, it has real dimensions and real frequencies associated with it. You can think of like particles, like protons and electrons. They have a defined size and any particle you come up with will. And so there's no way to come up with this infinitely divisible media that he kept talking about. And with that, I'll go to the last clip. But we know that on the smaller scales, general relativity comes into conflict with quantum mechanics. There is a smallest measurable length called the Planck length. When space expands, what happens to this smallest length? Does it expand too? Well, the Planck length stays the same. It's just defined as a combination of the gravitational constant, the Planck constant, and the speed of light. So if those aren't changing, and there's no evidence that they do change, then the Planck length remains the same. But as the universe expands, it adds more and more of these Planck lengths, which must expand out of the old Planck lengths. That implies an infinitely divisible space emerging from each Planck length. Even with a quantized fabric of space, it's still possible to expand it or condense it infinitely without changing its fundamental nature. Empty space can be rescaled infinitely. And that's even true if empty space contains something like dark energy. Empty space does have a very weak energy density, even in the absence of particles. As space expands, that density doesn't change. Remember, the balloon skin doesn't thin out. The result of this is that the total dark energy content of the universe depends on the amount of space in the universe, which means dark energy increases as the universe expands. But again, this will never have any effect inside bound gravitational systems. Its effect only manifests when there's an enormous amount of empty space compared to the amount of matter. But the ratio of empty space to matter inside galaxies does not change. The infinite rescalability of space means the universe can and probably will expand forever with no effect on this little bubble of relatively static space that we call the Milky Way. Well, and here in his desperation, he's trying to invent a medium out of Planck length sized objects or dark energy and more and more nonsense. Uh, I've done videos on how Planck length and 
dark energy can't exist. And I'll just refer you to those. So he keeps trying to defend this idea that space is expanding when the actual observational evidence tells us that it's not expanding in anything we see. Not in the galaxies, not in the space between galaxies and galactic clusters. But we don't see it in nebula. When we look at a nebula with diffuse space, it looks the same as it did a hundred years ago. Assume, taking into account we have better optics now. And even if we look at filaments that form between galaxies, I'm sure we'll see that those filaments aren't being stretched either when we observe them over time. So none of the observational evidence supports the idea of universal expansion. And none of it ever will. So I hope you enjoy this video, and if you do, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to read about my quantum field theory work or particle theory work, I do have some books from sale. And as always, I want to thank my supporters on Patreon and PayPal. You make a big difference in my life to have a little extra money, and I appreciate that. So thanks for watching.